Slowly but surely, I am expanding my base further and further out into my world, with no real end in sight at the moment. Who knows, if I keep on building in many many years, I may even make it all the way back to where I started this world at my spawn point. But, you know, baby steps. And today's baby step takes us directly into the water here of this river that wraps around my villager trading hall, which could do with a bit of a transformation. <laughs> oh, I, I was just saying, uh, first things first, I should probably let you guys know I, I swallowed a bit of water during the intro there. If I sound a little bit croaky, that's why. I'm not ill or anything. I am definitely not recording when I should probably be resting my voice. So my idea is to build an underwater village slash city. A mini Atlantis, if you will. And at some point, I would quite like to incorporate some life into this build. Aquatic life, to be specific. The only trouble is, with this being a river, any fish or whatever I put in here can just easily swim down the river and escape. Which would not be ideal. Also, I have no idea what this is doing here. I'm guessing at one point I needed to harvest a spruce tree. <laughs> that can get gone. Already, we're improving things. Luckily, at this end of the river, it sort of just comes to a complete stop, so I think it would be best to do some natural looking terrain, cutting a section across the river, and essentially just kind of having a lake plopped at the end of it. It's a little bit murky down there, hopefully that won't be the case in the long run. Once you're actually down here and your eyes are just, whoa, trident past the face, you can see pretty well. The only trouble is, I'm not too fond of the blocks that are on the floor down here. I don't think dirt and gravel go particularly well with the type of build that we're looking to do. I'm thinking something like sand might make things just look a bit brighter down here. Turns out I have zero sand, absolutely none, zilch. I think I might have converted it all into sandstone to be honest, got plenty of that. But that's fine, it means we can go to the desert and visit one of my favourite builds in this world. My pyramid. This is an absolute behemoth of a build, and makes for a pretty nice view while I'm harvesting some sand. A full inventory should be enough, I think. Okay, that is looking brighter and generally better. As you can see, I haven't done sand over every single block. That would have been a little bit overkill, but as you can see behind me there, I've kind of slowly lessened the amount of it as I've gone up the steeper parts. But on all of the blocks on the floor here where we're going to build stuff, those are in fact sand. I need to do something about not being able to see down here, as well as being able to breathe. I've had a potion that is very nearly running out. My turtle shell will help for a bit, but <laughs> not for long. I need something a little bit better. Oh yes, look at me, I am ready to do the deepest of dives. Let's see how it works. Um, my air bubbles going down quicker than they were before, that is a problem. That is a big problem, and I'm really heavy. Yeah, I can't really swim. Oh god. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm alive, I'm fine. We're gonna need a different idea. We need a conduit. To make said conduit, we need eight nautilus shells and a heart of the sea. I've got four nautilus shells and zero hearts of the sea. But luckily for me, I do have plenty of buried treasure maps. None of them looking like they're around here. So looking at the map here, we need to go in roughly this direction. Not quite. We need to go southeast, which I think is this way, yep, okay, let's fly until we're on the map. And it looks like we have arrived. The map is starting to get some colour in it, looking fantastic. And I believe the buried treasure is just down there somewhere. Okay, I could not be more on top of it if I tried. I'm just gonna take my shovel and dig around like oh. That was quick. <laughs> oh, there it is. I thought it wasn't in here. Cool, we got it. The rest of the stuff I don't really need, to be honest. 
We're officially over halfway to crafting this conduit, we just need more of these. Which can be obtained in three ways. Fishing, Killing Drowned, and The Wandering Trader. And I'm gonna go with all three, honestly. I'm gonna scour the ocean for drowned holding Nautilus shells. If that doesn't go well, I'll revert back to fishing, all whilst keeping an eye out for the wandering trader and hoping he has what I need. Now the bonus with these drowned is that if they are holding, oh that's a trident, that's not a Nautilus shell, ouch. Let's go away. <laughs> If they are holding a Nautilus shell, unlike the Trident, they will drop it 100% of the time. I just checked the wiki for how often these guys hold Nautilus shells. It's 3%. <laughs> this is... this is not happening. I'm doing something else. I thought I'd try out enchanting a fishing rod and just manually fishing for a while, and within 20 minutes I'd got all four Nautilus shells that I needed. Which honestly, I was not expecting at all. I thought I'd be there for a couple of hours, at least. We can now craft our conduit. And that does now mean we can place it in our conduit holder here. Most of these blocks are not needed, <laughs> but it does make it look a lot cooler. So if we place this down right in the center, get rid of this block, I'm guessing. Please activate, there we go. Oh, that is so cool. I'll be honest. This may be the first time I've ever activated a conduit in Survival Minecraft. And boy oh boy does it make it look better down here. We have been given conduit power, which is essentially just night vision and water breathing. <laughs> but it is super helpful for building everything else down here. Hello sir. It kills mobs too? This is so cool, I can't believe this is the first time I'm experiencing a conduit. <laughs> this is probably old news to a lot of you. So now that I can see and breathe like a regular underwater being, let's build some more things. Four builds later and things are definitely looking a little bit better down here. We've got ourselves a temple, this rounded structure whose name is escaping me, some sort of colosseum, maybe? I'm not sure. Whatever this is meant to be. And then my personal favorite, the giant trident statue. The next step is to add a little bit more life around here. Admittedly, we have plenty of fish already, even a few squids dotted around, and some dancing, drowning zombies behind me. <laughs> But one aquatic mob which we don't have and most certainly need are axolotls. Now originally I was going to load some tropical fish inside of here. I actually swam around my coral reef biome for a while, gathering four full shulker boxes full of buckets of tropical fish. But the plan was always to have axolotls inside of here and the thing is, well, come in a sec. Axolotls aren't very nice. They may look incredibly cute and adorable, but they're natural born killers. These vicious creatures will attack and kill anything in the ocean bar dolphins and turtles. So all of these fish and drowned and squids, they're goners <laughs> as soon as we move them in. And all of my hard work here was not wasted because you actually need buckets of tropical fish to breed them. So I'll be able to get plenty of axolotls swimming around. So to find axolotls, we need to go to a lush cave biome, and luckily I know exactly where one is. Sort of, at least. It's been a while, but I know we just gotta go down through this little hole, <laughs> and eventually we get there. It opens up into a big open mine shaft, and I'm pretty confident if I just follow my torches, it takes me there. Okay, yep, yeah, this, this is looking pretty lush. It's probably the right place. I can see something splashing around over there, or at least I think I can, yep, okay, that is definitely an axolotl. <laughs> hello friend, oh, hello friends, there's three of you. How amazing, how would you like to get in my bucket? <laughs> I think they would like that very much, hey, 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 where are you going? Come back here, can't get away that easily, you gotta come live with me in my lovely ocean city. I just saw the particles when something dies. <laughs> I'm guessing the axolotl is to blame for that. Yep, there's the criminal summing up the waterfall, you little pest. Come with me, sir. Hang on, you're not escaping that easily. Come on, get in the bucket. 
So in total there are five different types of axolotl. Pink, brown, yellow, cyan and the super rare one, blue. I'm not super fussed about getting the blue one because it is really rare and I don't want to be here all day but I would quite like to get the other four. I've been looking for a while and it was all unnecessary because in this little pond I think there is every single axolotl type. We got brown, yellow, cyan and pink. So we got 12 axolotls ready to let loose into our new build here and I'm just gonna go ahead and do it I guess. <laughs> sorry fish, sorry squid, sorry anyone else down here that's currently living and breathing. You, you better say goodbye now because the demons are about to be set free. Go on then little axolotl puppies. Go, go run wild in your new home. I'm still placing them and I can already hear things dying. <laughs> Okay, they are free. Let's see how long this takes for them to kill literally everything in sight. Not forgetting I have all of my buckets of tropical fish, so I'm gonna start breeding them too. Oh my goodness, look at the little baby. Oh, he's so cute, he's probably a demon too. Yep, he is. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. He's been alive for about three seconds and he's already got two kills. I'm a little bit scared of him. Some time has passed now and as you can see from the amount of dead salmon around, we've got a few more axolotls. If my maths are correct, we should have around 50 currently swimming about. Plus, I've got a whole nother shulker box full of tropical fish ready to breed up a few more. Now whilst I've been busy breeding, I've also been busy building a whole bunch of houses dotted around our city. Most of them mainly around the outskirts just to try and fill in a lot of the open spaces that we've had and honestly I think they look really good despite being pretty plain and nondescript and nothing going on with them. The inside is completely empty and I'm gonna leave it like that. I think they still look pretty good honestly. Every now and again and they're probably not gonna do it because they're camera shy. Oh. Oh my goodness, he's actually doing it. I don't believe it. <laughs> they do this, they go in, swim around the house, and eventually make their way back outside, which is really, really cool. A little bit like an aquarium ornament that the fish can swim around inside of. Now, the only real problem I'm running into at the moment is occasionally drowns spawn down here. It could also be zombies falling into the water, then drowning, or both. Either way, it does mean my axolotls are getting attacked from time to time, so I'm gonna try and reduce that just a little bit. And in case it wasn't obvious from all of the floating carcasses up here, they're pretty good at killing the drowned, they gang up on him and deal with him very quickly, but you know, over time it's gonna have a lasting effect. And I need to keep these water puppies alive. So I was thinking of just placing some light sources down here, like this super simple lamppost design, an underwater one of course. There's not much to it, but I don't think there needs to be. Okay, I've placed in a few more lamp posts, only a handful really, but it does a pretty good job at filling in some of the spaces and hopefully it will stop any drowns spawning down here. I'll be 100% honest, I don't even know if drowned work that way, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Having said that, I'm sure these little critters would be absolutely fine without the added level of protection. Fish and squid keep continuously spawning in here. I'm not sure why it's guaranteed death, but it keeps them fit and trained and ready for any proper attacks. I think the final thing I would actually like to do down here is just add in a bunch of kelp and seagrass. Maybe some sea pickles too. I was also debating with adding in some coral, but I honestly think it might be a bit too bright if we just take the brain coral here for an example. It's almost like too much color in comparison to everything else. I think the more neutral look of the just regular greens of the seagrass and the kelp and such would look a little bit better here. I could possibly add in a couple of the regular corals like that. Hmm, something to think about. Let me have a play around. So here is the before and here is the now. And what you're looking at is simply just kelp and seagrass with a small side of sea pickles. I did also try placing some coral fans on the houses just to see if that little bit of pop of color was helping at all and I don't like it. Not a big fan so I'm gonna go ahead and break it all down. I've also used up all of my buckets of tropical fish which means we are at full axolotl capacity. I mean I could probably breed more but I don't think I really need it. 
there are just two final things that I want to do before I'm ready to call this build done. And the first one is to do something about this section that we built. It's really flat and I'm just not a big fan. It looks peculiar and I don't like it. And the second thing I want to add in is some sort of way through this terrain that we've actually built. A big hole in the wall to connect us to the other side of the river, essentially. Well, this makes for a nice little view. I'm not sure how much I'll use it, given the fact I'm still underwater here. <laughs> And I could very easily just go over to the other side and actually swim around with these guys. But I'd say it's a nice little feature nonetheless. And by the way, the reason why it's a window instead of a proper entrance way through that is swimmable is because these little guys were desperately trying to escape. <laughs> and I know if I left that open, they would all leave pretty quickly. I'm not sure why though, I think this is a lovely home I've made for them all. A underwater ancient city of sorts. A small city, albeit, but a city nonetheless. But that's going to do it for now, guys. I'm going to sit here for a little while more and watch these axolotls wreak havoc on the poor sea creatures that are spawning in here. But thank you, everybody, for watching. I really hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.